Hey, what's up guys? <clears throat> Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to the next video in the Crow series of reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first sequel, The Crow, City of Angels. And um, Presley and um, I have your DVD and you're not getting it back. Um, I really hate when people write on stuff. I, I, I don't know why they do it. I really don't. But uh, yeah, I know I got to got a haircut I, I was kind of looking like the crow a little bit I was the hair was getting longer maybe I was going to be the crow I don't know but uh no it looks pretty good she did a good job today I can't complain but um yeah I just want to start off by saying that I really like the crow city of angels and for a long time I did not um the very first time I saw this movie I hated it I, I just I couldn't couldn't stand it I didn't like it at all and then I gave it another chance and ended up really liking the movie, which uh, I'm, I'm happy about because I watched it again last night. And, you know, I was very surprised watching it again after a long time. You know, like, okay, this is a good movie, in my opinion, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, I thought this was a good flick. And um, especially in this so-called director's cut. This is not the actual director's cut. Um, I don't know who put that edit together, but the director, I don't think did. I think it was uh, maybe the studio or, or something or, you know, something like that. But, um, yeah, you know, I was very surprised by, you know, how good the movie was. I'm like, wow, you know, I forgot. You know, it's kind of like, watching you know something you know yeah it's watching something that you haven't seen in a while and you forgot about it and then you're like wow like this is a really good movie or this is a great movie or whatever that's how I felt watching this again because um you know nowhere I, I wouldn't say nowhere near not as good as the first because the the original was you can't top the original none of the sequels if none of the anything haven't been able to do that the sequels the tv series nothing can top the original movie. It's just one of those movies where no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to 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 top the, the original. It's just, no, no. But this was very good. Uh, this was a very good movie, um, in my opinion. And I know there's a lot of people out there that like this, which I'm very happy, um, you know, and... I'm glad that that movie has an audience. Um, I, I really am. It's it's makes me makes me happy. You know, it really does because this is definitely the the best crow sequel. After this, they kind of suck in my opinion, um, which we'll get into those movies um, in the next couple of videos. But this one was actually a worthy sequel in my opinion. And um, you know, originally from what I gathered uh, before Brandon Lee died he actually signed on to do a sequel to the crow um i don't know i heard that the story was going to be um something along the lines of where uh eric would be stuck on earth and he had to figure out how to get back to heaven you know but he was powerless basically like he was a human again and he had to, I think Sarah was going to be a little bit older and she was going to get into some trouble or something and he had to help her out, but he didn't have the power of the crow and then somehow he would get the power back and then help her out and then move on. I, I read something long ago about that because I, I remember reading somewhere that Brandon had signed on to do the crow too and I'm like, well, how? Like, how would they have done a sequel to to this movie because of the way that it ended like you know he came back he killed all the bad guys he saved his friends and you know he was reunited with his love and that's it like again how would you be able to do a sequel like highlander 2 like highlander 2 if you really think about it doesn't make sense because at the end of highlander he's mortal he won the prize he killed everybody he's a human he can have babies and everything so Highlander 2, although I really like Highlander 2, you know, it, it doesn't make sense because at the end of the first movie, he wins. He's the, He won the prize. But, you know, I'm sure they would have come up with some interesting 
way to to bring bring Eric Draven, the character, back for another movie. I, I have no doubt about that. Um, but of course, again, what happened is what happened with Brandon, and you know they decided to uh, make a sequel and go in a different direction, which works with the Crow. You know, you don't have to have Eric Draven as you know as much as we all love him and the love the movie. You know, you can put a different person in that spot. And that's what I think worked about the sequels is it was a different character every time. It was a different person every time. And again, that is something with The Crow that can work. You know, uh, uh, you know. fortunately, it worked in this movie, which I like. But unfortunately for the next two films, because there was potential for those movies and they did not fulfill that potential, in my opinion. Um you know, so they decided to uh, move forward with a, with a different story. Now, there was a couple different ideas that they wanted to do. Um, one idea was it was going to take place in medieval times. They were going to do a, a, like, in the 16th century type story, which would have been cool. You know, really, I think it would have been cool to see that. Um, but, you know, luckily we got this movie, which I really like the story of this one, which we'll get into. And then, um, you know, they ended up using this idea, which is, um, you know, moving the story to Los Angeles because the first movie takes place in Detroit. Uh, they ne <clears throat> excuse me. They never say it in the movie besides, uh, T-Bird says Motor City. Um, but this movie moves to LA, which I like. And then you, they, I liked how they brought the character, of Sarah back from the first movie, but now she's older and, you know, she is like the guide for the crow, helping him understand who he is and his mission and everything like that, which I really like that. I, I really enjoyed how they, you know, still kept a connection to the original movie and brought Sarah back, made her character bigger and everything and, and made her one of the main characters. I thought that was very good. Um, you know, Crow 3 and Crow 4 kind of just isolated themselves, which is fine. Again, you can do that with this series, but, you know, I really liked how they connected the first two movies together. I really, I thought that was cool. Um, but the, uh, kind of the, the gist of it changed a little bit in, in one version of the script. Um, uh, God, what's his name? Um. Alex is his name. His name's Alex in this, right? I think it is. But wait a minute. That doesn't make sense because if his name's Alex in this one, but in the third one, the dude's name is Alex. Hold on. Let me, or did they change it? I don't know. Hold on. Let me, let me look this up quick. Because I think is the guy, the crow's name is Alex in this movie. I could be wrong. Because I know it's in the third one. Why would it be in both movies, though? Oh, Ash, my bad. Um, no. Correction. Okay, I now I realize what I wanted to say. Um, on the crow VHS, the original VHS of the crow, which I have, there is actually a teaser trailer for this movie, and they show the gravestone, and the gravestone says Alex Corbin, and then they change it to Ash Corbin. That's right, my bad. See, I, okay, I had my wires crossed there, but then I guess they remembered that or didn't remember that for the third Crow movie, and they named him Alex in the third one. Okay, that was trying to, like I said, my wires were crossed, forgot about that, uh, my bad. But yeah, um, yeah, okay, backing up. Um, in that teaser trailer, his name was Alex, and in the original script, it was too. Uh, there was a couple changes, though. In one version, um, it's not his son that gets killed, it's his brother. And then he would come back as the crow. And then there was uh, some other things in some different versions of the script. Uh, Sarah, there were some different things with Sarah... Um, at the end of the movie, the uh, Top Dollar was supposed to come back and Ash would have to fight Top Dollar, which would have been cool, but they decided to not do that. And in the in the script, there was a lot more. It was a bigger movie. It was a lot bigger movie in the original screenplay. Uh, there was a lot of things that they wanted to do. 
um, which they, you know, didn't, which we'll get into, um, in a, in a minute here, but yeah, uh, in one version, they were supposed to be brothers, in another version, um, his name was Alex, and it became Ash, um, Sarah, the character of Sarah was supposed to be different, um, I think also one idea was their one version that they were going to do was have a female crow, which I would like to see that if, if they ever, the only way that I would see a remake of the crow, if it's a female crow. And the reason why is because they've never done that in a movie on the TV series, which I'll get into when I get to that. There was a few episodes with a female crow, but they never went anywhere with it. Um, which again, I would like to see. That And I do know, I do remember hearing that there was a fan film that someone did. It was a remake of the original, but it was a gender swap. And that I would like to see. That I would be open to check out. Because they've never done that in any of the movies. Um, that's just me, though. But, yeah, like I said, the, the script, um, the names were different. It was supposed to be like a bigger movie and everything. And the script was actually written by David Goyer. Now, I don't know how much was changed or rewritten or whatever because, you know, it just seems like nobody really wants to talk about this movie. It, it seems like, you know, I don't think the filming of the movie was the problem. I think it was the post-production and everything because um, the Weinsteins took the movie away and they re-edited it and made it pretty... The, the theatrical cut, which I've only seen once, uh, that was the first time I saw the movie, is basically... A carbon copy of the original, which was not the intent, um, which I'll get more into in a, in a minute here. But yeah, David Goyer wrote this, and this was before Blade, before Batman and Superman and all that shit. Um, well, I like Blade, but not the the other stuff. But this was right after he wrote Kickboxer Two and Death Warrant, so he was still kind of coming up in Hollywood. Um, but I, you know, I like the script. I don't think the script was the problem with this movie. Um, you know, I know, again, the I think the post-production stuff was the issue. I don't think the actual production was. Um, but, you know, before we get into, like, the story and everything, you know, people were very supportive of this sequel. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff from back in the day where fans were excited that they were continuing the series. They were making another movie. Um, on, I actually have the laser disc of the original Crow, there is a little like 10 minute making or not a making of, but a little behind the scenes thing where they talk about this and you see fans at a convention and they're promoting the movie and everything. You can actually find it here on YouTube. It's called history of the crow. Um, it's pretty cool. And yeah, you know, people were supportive of, of this movie and I'm glad. I just think when it came out, people were let down because the theatrical cut was basically the same thing as the original movie, which you know, this version, this director's cut or whatever, um, you know, they're, they are similar films. The ideas are similar, but, you know, um, this movie, I think, gets a little darker, a little edgier, and it, it's more brutal. Uh, I do think The Crow, he kills people more brutally in this movie, and I'm not saying that he didn't in the first movie. It's just like, um, you know, it just seemed like the character was more brutal in his ways of, of getting revenge. Like Eric Draven, you know, the, like when he kills uh, Tintin, he was very like rage filled and everything when he killed some of the other characters. And of course that was toned down and changed a little bit because of what happened with Brandon. But um, it just seemed like in this movie, he was like, the crow was like all balls out. Like I'm going to fucking kill these guys. I'm going to, you know, and I really like that. Um, I thought Vincent Perez did a good job. And, you know, Vincent Perez is not a well-known name. I know he's done a lot of independent art house type movies. And uh, The Crow, City of Angels, was really the biggest thing that he did. But I really liked him in, in the role. Um, you know, I did not mind him as The Crow. I thought he did good. Um, you know, again especially with the circumstances with the original movie, it's really hard 
to try and top what Brandon Lee did. Like, again, you know, none, even as much as I like this movie, none of the sequels could live up to what the original Crow did. It's just, it's impossible because the way that Brandon Lee played it, and then, of course, the unfortunate circumstances that happen, um, you know, it's just impossible to reach that level. But I thought Vincent Perez handled it well. I enjoy his interpretation of the character. Um, you know, again, he just, he seemed a lot more angry in this movie. And I, I guess that was the idea. Um, you know, in the first movie, yeah, Shelley was the love of Eric's life, the woman that he was meant to be with. They were going to spend the rest of their lives together and have children and everything. And that was taken away and yeah, understandably, you're going to be angry. You're going to be upset. But I think with the idea here of the child being taken away from the father, you can understand that he'd be a little more upset and a little more pissed off um, in this type of scenario. And I like that. I like how they changed it. It wasn't, you know... A, another guy gets killed and his, his girlfriend gets taken away from which is what they did wrong with three and four in my opinion because they're the same the, the concept is the same as the first movie the girlfriend gets killed what i really liked about this is it was the son you know and again in, in the original one of the screen one of the other scripts it was his brother but i'm glad they changed it to uh his son in this one and and you know that i thought was a was a good idea for the story you know and that and again you know i know 17 minutes into this thing and well what's the plot um again i'm pretty sure if you're watching this you kind of already know what the story is but um ash corvin is a mechanic living in la la is is very dark it's very depressing um you know there's kind of no end in sight to the endless drug and and abuse and and all this that's going on and one night his son hears a gunshot and he goes outside to see a murder taking place and the people that committed the murder kill ash and his son and um he comes back right away which i i'd really like that about this one too was you know the original film it was a year later which i really like but this one, and then the other ones did it too, it kind of copied this one. I liked how he came back right away. You know, Sarah had the vision of what happened. He was resurrected as the crow. She went to go help him, and he went out and, you know, just started capping people. You know, just started murking some motherfuckers and getting some revenge, you know. So that I really liked about this movie, how it was basically just instantaneous. You know, he was killed, he came back, he killed everyone, and then the rest is history. And then also there is, you know, which they kind of explored in the first movie a little bit, there's the subplot of the villain trying to get the power of the crow for himself. Now again, in the first movie, they kind of explored it with the character of Micah, played by Bai Ling. She understood that the crow was the link between the living and the dead, and that was his power, and that was what she wanted to take away from him. But that didn't encompass the whole movie. Uh, in, in this one, it kind of takes the second half of the movie where, you know, the uh, the chick with no eyes, with the, she's seeing the visions and stuff, you know, she, she starts telling uh, Judah, who is played by Richard Brooks, who's a very good actor. I've seen Richard Brooks in a lot of things over the years. Uh, he was in Firefly. He was in The Substitute with Tom Berenger. He's been in a bunch of stuff over the years. He's definitely a recognizable face. And I really enjoyed him as the villain in this movie. You know, he tries to, and he does, at the end, he gets the power of the crow for himself. You know, which I did like. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, you know, and some and the, the villains are great. You have Thomas Jane, who was first starting out. He's like this, you know sex maniac guy you know it was it was fun to see thomas jane play that role early in his career iggy pop is in the movie who iggy pop is a punk rock singer he wanted to be in the first movie but i think he was on tour or he was sick or he had surgery something prevented him from being in the first movie which is why he's in this one 
Um, and then you have Tui Trang. Yes, Trini from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers plays the female villain. And um, I thought she was great. Um, you know, she didn't have a lot of dialogue. She didn't have a lot to do in the movie. But, you know, uh, I really enjoyed her in this movie. And this was, she was trying to make a comeback in Hollywood. Uh, she had started acting again and she was starting to get roles like this and some other movies and then unfortunately you know she passed away as well but it was really cool the first time I saw this movie um I was like oh shit that's Trini and she's a bad guy like oh that's really cool and um yeah I really I liked her in this movie and um you know it's a another tragedy you know her passing she passed away so young um you know, I would have loved, of course, would love to have met her and talk about Power Rangers, but it would have been cool to uh, talk about The Crow as well. I'm sure she would have, you know, talked glowingly about it and everything. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a cry and shame. That's another uh, tragedy in, in Hollywood that, you know, some, I, I couldn't believe it when it happened. I remember when it happened and still can't believe it, you know, kind of wish it didn't happen, but you know, it's just unfortunate how life goes sometimes, you know, but, you know, so the cast was good, and I like Mia Kirshner, who she's been in a bunch of stuff, she was on The L Word, uh, she's been in some other movies, she was in, I remember she was in, uh, it was a Dracula TV series from the early 90s, it was kind of a goofy, Goonies type Dracula show, and she was the female lead in that, and she's going on to some other things. I liked her in the in the role of Sarah from the the character from the first movie. Um, and again, you know, I like the 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 movie at least this version. I, again, this is really the only version I've ever seen. The theatrical cut I saw once long ago on Stars, the excuse me, the movie channel, and I don't remember a thing about it. And I don't know if the theatrical cut ever got a video release. Um, because the VHS I have of this is the director's cut. The DVD and Blu-ray is the director's cut. The laser disc, like, I don't know if they ever released the theatrical cut on video. I guess they realized they fucked up and they made the extended cut, the, you know, uh, the, the, the only version you can get. Like with Highlander, I don't think any of the original theatrical cuts of the Highlander movies are available. I think it's the all the director's cuts of them, which those are the standard version, which I don't mind because they're all the better versions. But yeah, you know, but again, I thought the, the, the pace was good in this movie. It's very quick. I mean, the movie is 91 minutes, but it, it cuts at a very quick pace, a very fast pace. Uh, the action, you know, is good. The only like issue that I have with this movie really is the special effects look really hokey. Um, and I guess that's just because the movie had a lower budget than the first movie. I, I don't know. Um, you know, but the, the I will admit that the special effects look wonky and, and they don't look very good to me. But, you know, it is what it is. I can, you know, it, it kind of irks me. Like I was watching it last night and I was like, really? Like, come on. We can, we can do a little bit better, in my opinion, but, I mean, you know, it, I guess, again, the, the budget was, was low for the movie. I think the budget, I'm pulling it up now, was only, like, $15 million. Um, I'm not sure, I can't. Can't find any information about the budget, but it does say, I, I, another, yeah, they, uh, like I was said earlier, the female crow, they wanted Sarah to come back and be the female crow. The, yeah, 19th century England was another idea that they tossed around. It was originally going to be two brothers, but um, they changed it to father and son, which I really like that. Uh, yeah, Top Dollar and Grange, who was played by Tony Todd, were supposed to come back in the ending. And they changed it, which I get, you know, um, I get that. Uh, yeah, uh, John Bon Jovi auditioned for the role, for the lead role, which I, if I ever meet him, I would love to ask him about that, which is, uh, 
you know, interesting. I think that's very interesting. It would have been really cool to see uh, to see John Bon Jovi as the Crow. Like that would have been a very interesting movie, in my opinion. But uh, for whatever reason, we didn't get that. But again, going back to what I was saying earlier, um, you know, I guess because the the budget wasn't that big, it, it just you know, they just decided to do cheap special effects or whatever. But I do like the the action in the movie. Um, you know, and again, I really like the characterization of the crow. You know, I like how he's, you know, he comes back and he's like freaking out because he doesn't realize what happened. And I don't know if that's what they wanted to do in the first movie. Obviously, they had to change it because of what happened. But... You know, I like how he's like basically insane and he comes back. There's a uh, there is a deleted scene, um, which we'll get into later, not on here, but um, where he actually shoots himself to prove Sarah shoots him. My bad. Sarah shoots him to prove that he's the crow. And they actually use that in the crow four with whatever. But um, and they cut that scene out. And I like how when he goes to the first guy at the drug lab, he's pick a card and he's messing with them and then he blows up the drug lab. Um, I like the motorcycle chase with Iggy Pop, which in the, I believe, I like how he's also a motorcycle mechanic. I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the original comic, the crow rode a motorcycle. <clears throat> Again, it's been a while since I've read the original comic. Um, but... Um, I think he rode a motorcycle and I like how he did that in this movie. And I like how, you know, uh, Iggy Pop's character goes to the orgy and that kind of, that kind of stuff, you know, I just, I mean, I, I get it. It's the crow. It's supposed to be a little weird, but the whole, like the orgy stuff and the weird sex stuff in this movie, like I thought they could have cut some of that out, cut that down. Like, I don't know. Just like every time I watch this, I'm like, Really? Like, do we really need this in the movie? I don't know. That's just me. Um, maybe if, you know, again, they would, would cut some of that. And I get why, you know, I get why it's in the movie. It's it's to show that L.A. is a cesspool and, you know, debauchery and drugs and all that. Like, I get why that's in the film. But, I don't know, just to me, it's like, can we, can we get through this, please? <laughs> like, do we need to see this? Um, but I like how... You know, Iggy pops at the bar and he sees him in the mirror and, you know, starts chasing after him and they have a, a motorcycle chase and he kills him. I like the fight with Tui Trang, which in the the original cut was supposed to be longer and more violent and they cut it down. Um, you know, when he kills... I, I will admit, when Thomas James goes into the jerk-off room, as I call it, that was interesting because I like how, you know... He was about to blow his load. He puts a coin in and the crow's in there. And I like when the girl says, you know, you'll go blind doing that. And then the crow rips his eyes out when he kills him. You know, I thought that was cool. You know, again, um, it seems like he's more brutal in this. I, I don't know. Like, that's just me. It just seems like the crow, Ash Corvin, is more brutal and, you know, gets more crazed when he kills people and everything in this one. And I like that. I really did. And I like the the final showdown. I like how it takes place during the Day of the Dead, which the original movie was Halloween and Devil's Night. And I like how this one kind of kept with that and moved it to the Day of the Dead. Um, you know, I like all that where Judah, you know, steals the power of the crow and then, you know, Ash comes back and, and, you know, finishes him off and, um, you know, Sarah unfortunately dies. And then, you know, I, there's a lot of dramatic stuff in this. I, I really like the scene where he talks to the priest in, in the church and I like the ending and the little girl, um, that Sarah befriends. And then at the end is actually Beverly Mitchell from seventh heaven, which this was one of her first movies, which was cool. Um, you know, I was like, cool. You know, it's uh, interesting to see that. You know, I, I, it was cool to see her start. Because I, I always liked her as an actress. You know, I, I don't, I'm not the fan of 
Seven in Heaven, but, you know, I liked her in some other stuff she was in. But it was cool to see her in the beginning. And again, you know, I like, um, you know, Sarah dies, and then, you know, the little girl says, you know, where are you going to a better place? And he just rides off and is reunited with his son. And again, I think Vincent Perez did a good job with doing his own interpretation of the character. And of course, you're not going to, you're not going to top what Brandon Lee did. It's impossible. Again, it's just one of those movies where, you know, you can't top whoever you get in a sequel. It's just, I don't care if you get, you know, a clone of Brandon Lee. It's just, it, it's, it's not going to be as good. It's just, but I really liked him. And again, you know, he never, Vincent Perez never had a huge successful career, but you know, he seems happy with what he did, you know, art house independent type movies. And, you know, sometimes that's all people need to do is what they like, not nothing commercial or big like the crow. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I really like this sequel. Now, again, like I said earlier, um, the Weinsteins, Harvey Weinstein, first of all, fuck you, you piece of shit. They, uh, they took Tim Pope, which I think this is the only movie he's directed. He was a music video director, which was kind of what they did with the first movie. Alex Proyas did some similar stuff and, and then they made him the director and they, the idea was to make, make it their own, not make a direct carbon copy of the first movie and then in the editing room i guess they made the decision to make it like the first movie and they took it away from tim pope tim pope disavowed of it i know i've seen some interviews and stuff where he talks about what happened and how they took the movie away from him and how he really wants nothing to do with it he doesn't really like to talk about it which is understandable i get it and it seems like i never see people talking about this like i can't find clips of of uh you know some of the people that were in this movie discussing i guess maybe it was just something that they don't like to talk about i don't know it's like i can't really find any like conventions or interviews now where these the people that worked on this movie discuss it i really i, I don't know maybe i'm not looking hard enough i don't know um but yeah the original cut was a lot more violent it was a it was it was a bigger movie. It really was. It, it it got into a lot more dramatic stuff. And um, I have a fan edit version. I've never watched it. I, I just haven't had the time to watch it. And it adds some stuff in there. I'd like to to get that out and watch it sometime soon. Um, but my good friend on here, Jack Craven, made a video showing some of the deleted scenes and pictures and stuff like that. Um, I'd like to, I haven't watched that in a while. I'd like to give that a watch again. Um, but I mean, this version again, it says it's the director's cut. I guess they just, you know, stuck that title on there just cause I don't know. And, you know, I don't think the director had anything to do with this, but you know, maybe this was his final cut and then they change it again. And I don't know, but you know, I, I really like this. I, I can't, I can't stress that enough. And, um, you know, this version's fine by me. But I would love to see a work print or a director. I would, and I would really love to see a company like the first movie, a company like Shout Factory, get the rights to do the fir just the first two movies and do an upgraded special edition and and hear interviews with these, even if it's not positive, just at least talk about it and maybe get some of that deleted footage on there. That would be great to see. But, you know, I really like this movie. I can't stress it enough. You know, again, the first time that I saw it, it was the theatrical version. I didn't care for it. And then a couple of years later, I don't know if it's... Uh, no, I found the VHS. And I said, you know what? Let me give this movie another chance. And I did. And it was, again, this version. And I bought the VHS. I was like at Goodwill or something. I found it. And I was like, you know what? This isn't bad. You know, and I think over time I've enjoyed the movie more. I, I've, you know, again, I, I picked up this DVD. I have it on Laserdisc because the Laserdisc has features which are not on here. Um, it has the last interview with Brandon Lee, which is on the first Crow DVD and stuff. But for some reason they put it on 
the Crow 2 laser disc. I don't know. And then also that laser disc has music videos, which never, I guess they couldn't get the rights to them again to be put on here. And, um, the music videos, uh, white zombie doing, I'm your boogeyman, which I love that cover. Uh, I think holes on there, whatever song they did a couple songs for this and filter song Jurassic which I like that. Uh, those are on the laser disc, but no other version, no other DVD or anything, but this one has different features. That's why I have it. Um, it has a behind the scenes featurette, a production and costume design featurette, a commentary with producer Jeff Most, who was on the first one, first crow commentary. Composer Graham Ravel, who came back to, the, to do the score, which I do like the score of this. Uh, Richard Brooks, who played the villain Judah, the production designer, and a costume, and the costume designer. Uh, poster concepts and production still galleries. So there you go. And again, I like the soundtrack on this one as well. Uh, again, White Zombie is on here. Um, Hole. I don't mind Hole. I just don't like Courtney Love. Um, Bush is on here. Filter. So there's some good music on here. I do have the, the soundtrack to this on CD. I would love for a vinyl release. Maybe one day. Um, we'll see. But, you know, yeah. So, and then I also have this Blu-ray because uh, you have to, if you get this one, this has features. This has the Brandon Lee interview from the Laserdisc, and then it has the making of featurette, I think. Um, and I can't remember. But, yeah. So, if you want... Features, get these, because different features on both. And I was very happy with the transfer of this. I know a lot of people complained about this one. I was reading some reviews and stuff. But I thought the transfer was pretty good. Uh, this movie, fuck this movie. We'll get to that later. But um, I got this double feature just for the City of Angels because uh, it has features, which, again, are different from the DVD. So there you go. And then if you have a laser disc player, get the laser disc because that has different features from both of these. So, yeah. And it's just funny how, you know, this is a different company, but it's the same company and they couldn't put all the features from one. But I guess with music, it's a little bit harder because of the rights. But, you know, that's why I still have a laser disc player. Well, for many reasons, but there you go. But yeah, at the end of the day, I, I know I've gone on far too long here. I really like... The Crow, City of Angels. Um, it Again, it was a movie that I had to give another chance to. And I'm glad I did because I really like it. Um, it's not as good as the first movie. Of course not. But it, I think it's a solid underrated sequel. And I'm glad that there's people out there that like this movie. And this is definitely the best sequel to The Crow. In my opinion. Um, some other people would disagree. But, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So, it's cool. But anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review of, again, The Crow, City of Angels. Stay tuned. Next, I'm going to review um, the first of the two direct-to-video <clears throat> uh, Crow films, The Crow Salvation, which was meh, to be honest. And then also, uh, when this movie came out, unfortunately it flopped. It only made like $20 million worldwide, and... Um, after that, you know, Crow 3 and 4 went right to video. So there you go. Anyway, that forgot about that. But yeah, so until the, the next time, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll see you later.